Hey, what's good? What's going on, beautiful people? This is me, the Infinity Midwife, coming to you once again. I'm coming with another oracle message, y'all. It's becoming something daily. But, you know, I just want to leave it, you know, I, I want to make it as free as possible because I feel like it can help. Uh, it can help a lot of us just on the daily, okay? So I hope y'all are taking care of your minds, your hearts, and your whole being. Now, wait a minute, more. it's my train. Okay, <laughs> it is what it is. Yes. So, the messages for today, the messages that we have for today, uh, today being Tuesday, the day of Mars Day, right? Mars is a, is a fiery planet, right? Very impulsive. It's a day of action. It's a day of, of maybe wanting to... Um, follow through with some fiery inspiration or some action so what did we have for the energies for this present day the first card that i got so again the way i i do this is i choose oracle cards and then i clarify with some tarot so i'm using this deck and uh one of the things that i like using the decks that i like using as oracle cards are you know they're diverse so it's not always the same so the first card that I got is Sage, right? Purification. I like this. I like this. Uh, this deck. Right. You can see a lot of Sage that is suspended in the air. Now this first card uh, spoke to me right off the bat with. Um, although today is a Mars day, and we probably are inspired to you know, be called to do some action or to be very much inclined to do, you know, something that is very inspiring or maybe have the Im impulsivity to act on something. I feel like we need to, um, maybe clarify or purify the type of action. So, you know, it, it is divinely guided, right? I feel that sometimes we can have our, our, um, judgment being clouded by, you know, what are we really acting on? Are we acting from our mental, from our ego space? Because it's telling us that, you know, hey man, you need to put in the work. You need to do this. You need to act on this like right away, right now, yesterday, right? And then there's your heart that's also telling you something else. And then there are external influences that are telling you how you need to act on, you know, on, on, or how you need to, you know, get things done. But most of the time, when you get to a space of purifying your space, so it can be, it can be purifying. So purification can happen several ways. It can be one, cleaning your external, dusting off, um, purifying with burning some incense, some sage, saging out your space, uh, using some Palo Santo, using some forms of, you know, incense to clear out, clear out your space. And then there's also different types of spaces like your body. Your body is a temple. How do you purify your body? Do you drink a lot of water? Do you go by the water? Do you take baths? Um, do you fast? Do you meditate? And then with your mind, how do you clear or how do you purify your mind? How, you, how do you purify your thoughts? Do you keep a journal? Do you speak things into existence? Do you have a dialogue with your spiritual team so that you can let go of maybe the the clouding judgment that is probably, uh, you know, um, disabling you into making the correct call to action? So that's purification for that card. And so what I got is the sun in reverse. Yeah, I do reversals. Um, I, I used to not do it, but now I do it. So we got the sun in reverse. And the sun in reverse speaks of things that do not make us happy. Right? The things that we do in our daily lives, that things that we do, people that were, situations that we're in, relationships that we're in, collaborations that we're in, uh, thoughts that we're entertaining or attaching ourselves to habits that we're probably holding on to that does not make us stand in our happiness. 
if I flip it over, you would see that she is thoroughly happy. The sun is rising and shining for her. And she is just immersed in that joy and in that happiness. But when you flip it upside down, it is the opposite meaning. So the sun. And I feel that when you can sage, when you can purify your spaces, your different spaces, your mental, your physical, your heart, your environment, you can then come into, you know, knowing exactly what is it that you need to get rid of or maybe have more clarity on the things that um, aren't bringing you happiness, total happiness. And so the thing that followed through or that I draw right next to it is the, the high priestess. And so to me, what I, what I feel like saying here is, you know, when you are not purifying your space, when you are not in, implementing rituals of purifying of, you know, um, of sitting in, in, in silence of, you know, allowing spirit to, to work on, you know, the clouds to work you through things, right? Because everything is a process you may feel like you're probably stagnant. You're, you're probably feeling like, okay, like you're not happy about how your life is unfolding. But when you allow purify, purity, when you start implementing rituals of purifying your spaces, your different spaces, you allow yourself to come into more clarity, more intuition on the things that you need to let go of, the things that are making you unhappy, the things that are leaving you in a place of stagnancy. So ultimately, purification will allow you to have more spaces and to have more clarity on the things that aren't making you happy, the things that are keeping you stagnant. Okay? So the next following card that I got is the Two of Cups in Reverse. The Two of Cups in Reverse speaks of, again, um, coming, to, coming to the realization that there's no more love there, right? And it's, it's very much so uh, a follow through with this right here, right? And I feel like if we add the High Priestess in the middle or right even here, Purification will allow you or will allow for the high priestess within you to start having clarity on the things that are bringing you not no longer to happiness and also no longer bringing you um, love. Right. And you're coming into clarity of what no longer brings you happiness and what no longer is bringing you into your love love about yourself but also love with things that you've held on to that used to bring you some form of love in the past two of cups you see how that both of their their hands are tied together and you know you see the magic created when you are in that space of union that space of unity so when you flip it upside down, it means the total opposite, right? You feel like you're you're not creating, you're not in a space of unity, you're not in a space of of love, you're not in a space of union, union with yourself. Maybe your spiritual and your humanity isn't coinciding or in alignment, or maybe it's people, things, and places that aren't bringing you that creativity that passionate love or that passionate creativity for you to actually be expressive of that love, right? So pure purification will enable you to be more clear on the things that aren't make it, bringing you happiness. Sometimes it could be a routine. Today is Tuesday, a day of Mars. Maybe it's actions that, you know, you take actions or thoughts that you entertain in your mind that you know used to work for a time but maybe now isn't isn't bringing you um into union with yourself maybe it's someone in your life that you've overlooked 
we kept overlooking it because you know it used to fit a certain belief that isn't any longer um fulfilling that purpose two of cups in reverse it can bring you as well state of um sadness or um stagnant or you know not feeling that creativity that you used to once have maybe because you're you've fallen into a routine that just keeps you there where you know you feel like you can't really create from a spontaneous space or place of being because you have all these chores all these responsibilities and maybe if you purify you allow yourself to play, purify your your space and um to me one of the ways that I like to purify my 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 body is through fast water fasting and I like to say this you know every season every cycles there's a need to purify purify your mind your body your heart right and then last card as an outcome when you can come into clarity about the things that no longer makes your heart beat. When you come into that realization, you then bring awareness. Ooh, that's my belly. <laughs> you then bring awareness to old attachments, old things. Right, you you come into that that realization that it's no longer bringing you. Right, you you're, you're almost ready to let go of these attachments, the devil in reverse, these obsessions, these thoughts that used to help you be in this survival mode for a minute, but isn't working anymore because you're transforming, you're purifying. A version of yourself you're letting go right so that's the devil in reverse so purifying is a good thing and I say this every day we should have implemented a form of of ritual that allows you to receive and that allows you to give and because everything is everything has a pull polarity the law of polarity Everything has a dark side and a bright side. And as you are giving, sorry, as you are giving, you're giving of that, of that light and you're also giving of that darkness. And as you're receiving, you're receiving of that light and you're also receiving of that darkness. And when you can come into a space of purifying your mind, your heart, your space, your body, right you can then realize what is it that you are giving of the light what is it that you're giving of the darkness what is it that you're receiving of the light what is it that you're receiving of the darkness and when you purify yourself most of the time is you're giving yourself clarity of what's been hidden in the shadows of what no longer serves Okay, so we're moving on to the next card. I pulled three oracle cards today. And when you purify yourself, the next stage is to actually start wishing upon a star of the things that really brings you some form of magic into your life. Then the lion. Then the lion is a plant that has many, many properties. One of them is actually purifying or detoxifying your liver, your, your organs, your internal organs, your digestive. And most of the time, uh, we use the dandelion, the root especially is very potent in um, detoxifying your digestive, helping in clearing out the toxins. Some say it's a weed, but it's not a weed. It's a magical plant. And as you can see, the dandelion has various forms. We can see it as the flower, 
and then the flower changes it becomes this white bulb <laughs> right and so when you come out of a space of purification you can then create more space to bring in more of your wishes right sometimes you know because everything works in cycle right you have you have um you have periods of receiving and then you have periods of giving and when you know that you have purified your spaces purified your mind purified your heart and you've come into conclusion of the things that that isn't any longer resonating with you you give you give up the old clothes you give back to earth of the things that no longer serves you give back to air the words by speaking your truth of of the things that no longer serves you give back you give back with the fire by burning maybe you know some forms of habits right by giving yourself a period of of purifying by maybe fasting you allow yourself to maybe receive more. After that period of fasting, you realize that your body maybe needs more fruits, vegetables, water, and less of the previous cycle nourishment that you were indulging with. <laughs> Been there, done that. You know, we've all done this. Okay. So wishes. More spaces to receive, more to receive in your space. Is that my phone? Yes, it is. Hold on, people. Okay, so when you are in the space of your wishes, right? You, you have purified your space. Now you are allowing more space to receive, right? You're writing yourself a letter. It's a new cycle. You got brand new dreams. Or maybe it's old dreams that you want to rekindle. You're making more spaces. More space to receive those dreams. And what clarified the wishes is the five of pentacles in reverse. Five of Pentacles, Five of Pentacles in reverse speaks of, you know, not be not feeling left out in the cold. Right? Feeling that you're deserving. Feeling that there is something that is coming in for you. No longer feeling maybe defeated or feeling like, you know, things aren't just coming in for me. Because you've made space and you've you are believing again in the wishes you're rekindling the wishes any form of wishes maybe feeling more contempt within yourself satisfied happy um have more peace of mind right that's when you realize that you no longer need to be in this space of feeling defeated feeling left out in the cold right you feel more joyful you feel more um you have more gratitude. You know that you are putting effort into things that are going to be fruitful. And then the six of cups in reverse. It came out in reverse. So to me is, you know, stop looking at the things in the past that didn't work out. Right? Stop ruminating on on the old stories that, you know, didn't work out in the past. I've done this in the past and it didn't work, you know, so I'm, I'm not going to do it again because I know the end result. No, you don't know the end result. That is why you've purified your space and that is why you've created more space to bring in those wishes, to rekindle those wishes. And that is why you need to let go of these old stories, right? You... Allow serendipity to come into your space, right? No longer looking at the past as a future outcome, but just allowing 
the magic into your life again. Okay? And when you make sure that you are not repeating the same patterns, you are not hoping from a place of lack, you're not hoping from a place of a failure, you know that things are gonna come in quick. Your wishes are coming in quick. The chariot. When I look at the chariot, the chariot usually is, it is a card of fast movement. But it, it, it's also about fast movement, but I also feel like it's a card of focus. You see how there's speed and the wind and the horses are driving straight ahead of them? It's a card of focus, right? Focusing the dark, the dark and the light. And see how that person is on top? Right, it's like my dreams are coming in no matter what because I'm focusing here. I'm focusing all of my energies and resources towards that dream. The chariot. And the last piece of outcome <laughs> that I got for this one is the five of wands. I like the colors. See how there's matching colors? There's the yellows, there's the purples, there's the red, there's the white. Now the five of wands speaks of conflict. Speaks of competition. Challenges. So when you are wishing upon a star, you want to rekindle things that makes you happy. You've made space for it. You've purified your space, your mental, you have more mental clarity and now you have made more space for your wishes to come true. You need to stay focused because this is gonna be the opposition presenting itself. Sometimes you're gonna be uh, strolling on some on some um, social media and having to see someone that does or resembles the things that you want to do, right? That's part of your wish and you feel conflicted. You feel that it's a challenge. You feel opposition. That's just a reminder that you are on the right track and you need to stay focused. Because, see, when you are using the law of manifestation, you are manifesting things in your life, like a wish that you want it to come true. It's going to ask of you to stay in that focused energy. Stay in that focused energy means what? You have wished upon a star. Now you need to stay focused on using your resources of the dark and of the light to make it come true meaning your heart and your mind are focused on the task ahead. Your wishes are coming true, but they're not just coming true by you just, you know, um, by you just waiting for it to come true. You need to have action behind it. You need to be receptive. So to me, the chariot, when you look at it, is the white horse representing our mental, the dark horse representing our heart our feminine aspect, our masculine aspect. And when we're wishing upon a star, we need to be receptive with our heart. A receptive, open to our intuition on receiving the downloads from the universe on what's going to be, what's needed for that dream to come true. And then we need to be also receptive on how we're gonna draw the bl blueprint what kind of inspired action we're gonna have to to do in order to get that that dream or that wish to come true. And despite all the confusion, all the conflict, all the opposition presenting itself, 
Actually, the more opposition that present itself to your doorstep as you are manifesting, the more confirmation it is that you are on the right track. If there's no opposition, know that maybe, you know, it is, it is in the work, but, you know, there's always a law of rhythm right the the bigger your dream the bigger the ops the bigger their dream the bigger the ops and you need to you need to wish big cuz baby you this is your your world your life you know so you need to wish upon a star and you also need to stay open on the types of information you're going to receive from a higher perspective as to how you're going to have to cherry it, focus on it. And the more you get resistance, resistance can come from you as well, right? It can be self-sabotage talk. It can be opposition from your own thought pattern, from the things of the past coming in and saying, no, it's not doable. You can't do it. It's a dream that it's only a dream. Yeah, it's not going to happen. It's going to fail again. Or if it comes in, people are going to try to take it over because this is what happened in the past. Right? You're going to get conflict. Conflict is going to come from within and on the external. But you're going to have to stay focused, chariot, and see past through. More opposition, more confirmation that you are on the right track. All right. Now, as you are manifesting, so we can say, we can break it down like that. There's a first part of, you know, clearing the way, making sure that you're making space for whatever you are calling into your, your space. Then, as you are manifesting, you need to be receptive to the things that no longer that is of the past that you do not want to recreate for the dreams to come in you're gonna have to to be attentive to the type of plan inspired actions intuition that you're going to need to draw out and act upon and the more opposition you receive the more confirmation that you are on the right track. Next message I get is chamomile. Attends chérie, j'arrive. J'arrive. So the last card, my children are calling me, so it's the last card. So the last card right here is chamomile. Chamomile speaks of, and that's, that's the most hard, I think, part of manifesting. It speaks of relaxing. It's a card of the sun. And one of the laws when you are manifesting is allowing the universe to step in and to work for you. That's why you need to relax. It's a process. It's not easy. <laughs> right? So, you know, brew some chamomile and relax. Relax as if your dream has already manifested. Chamomile is a herb that is going to bring you into relaxation. It's a nervine, so it helps um, it helps you calm down. It's also used for other health purposes. Uh, I would say it can be topical, so for the skin, rashes and stuff like that. And it can also be good for maybe um, uh, colds right but i'm i'm pretty sure it's more so uh, topical so it's good for the skin again like i said it's it's a sun it's a plant of the sun right we see that in fairly much so in spring but what it does for you it has a calming effect it relaxes you chamomile with honey for the kids at night is really good so you might want to brew when you are in your manifestation uh, process, you might want to come into this 
after acting out, right, the chariot, after being focused, you've planned out, you've acted on with divine guidance, you then want to come into a space of relaxation, allowing the process to unfold. And most of the time, this is where, you know, there is confliction, there is conflict. Because once you've done what was needed, you then need to come into a space of allowing the universe to do the, to do the rest. Allowing yourself to fall back and to just trust. <laughs> and when I say this, the first, the last, the, the other card that got drawn is the four souls, four of swords. She's in relaxing fetal position. She has drawn herself back. It's not hermit. It's just relax. She has gone back into the fetal position, allowing mama to allowing mama earth to do the job, to do the rest of the process. Right? She's not she's not she's not sad. She's closing her eyes, knowing that she is protected that her wishes are coming true see how that that red thread it's kind of like the placenta the heart is right in the middle in the middle of the nest it's like she is trusting she can be at rest chamomile and then the next card is the queen of pentacles See how she's poised, holding on to her coin. I feel like when we are in a manifestation process, sometimes we have a hard time embodying the energy of our dreams already coming true. Right? We want to control the process of how it's going to come true. But we need to let go. We need to be in a space of just totally letting go and allowing the universe to do the rest. See how she... She's just poised. Look at her eyes. Her eyes are closed and she's just holding on to her coin. She's sitting poised in her seat. Eyes closed. Her dream has already come to fruition. She's not even fighting it. She's relaxing. She's trusting that the universe is bringing her in it's actually actually already there it's already there she's already in the energy she's already in the embodiment that is there that's the hardest if you ask me <laughs> i'm a capricorn son so i like results i like factual things so for me it's a, it's a harder thing to do right trusting that it's already there that your dreams have already come true and believing the next card that followed through is the Three of Wands. See, the Three of Wands and the, and the Queen of Pentacles is, is just like one after the other. See how she is embodying that energy that her dream has already come true? She's holding on to a coin. She's not even looking at the coin. She just knows it's there in her hand. She doesn't have to do anything. She's already, she has already embodied. She has, she has already embodied the energy that it's there. And then the three of wands, it's just a further step ahead. Looking at your ship sailing in. The fires are lit. Right? You're just waiting on your ships to sail in. And when I say waiting, I, I do not mean that you just sit around and be like, okay, when are my ships? When is my ship come? When is my wish coming through? You know it has already come through. Through, true. You just got to stand in that energy that it's already true. And then the final outcome is the Three of Cups. Celebration! You need to celebrate. Celebrate that your dreams are already here. Be in the embodiment that your dreams are here. So it's a constant... It's a constant practice. You have to practice being in that energy of gratitude already. 
being grateful, thankful in the things and in, in the purification of the spaces that you've done. And then you've acted with divine guidance on the things that you want to bring in as your wish. Then you have to embody, you have to embody the energy that it's already here for you. Yep, that's what it is. Three of Cups speaks of celebration, friends coming together, sisterhood, new friendships, new collaborations, celebrations. See how they're just looking in the sky and they're all in awe with life? This is what you, you have to embody at this point in the process of manifesting. manifesting. Okay, you guys. And the final, final outcome of all these three, three cards together, the final outcome that I got is, so the free final cards is the lovers. I love this card. Look at this. Look at this card. Isn't it fiery? To me, this, this card just means embracing the process, not just the end result. Embracing the whole process of manifesting. Embracing it all. Just as it is. Embracing it all. And every step of the way, having more love for where you are in the process. One of the things that I do in the process of manifesting, and I'm going to be uh, doing a video on Patreon on how to do this, is switch your breath, is bring yourself into, um, bring yourself into relaxation mode. And there are a lot of ways to do it. And there are a lot of ways to do it, but um, I wanna share with you guys what I do in order to be in that space of in that space of the lovers <laughs> there are several ways to do this see how they're orgasmically in sync with one another everybody has access to this it's a birthright but i'll share with you on patreon what is it that i do to be in that state as much as i can or bringing myself back into that state. It's gonna be on my Patreon. My Patreon is $15 a month. If you are interested, I try to share as much knowledge on things that I do in my everyday to keep me in that state of gratitude, that state of love with all that I do, all that I am. Okay, you guys, that was the message. I'm not gonna go over the 40 minute mark. L like the message share it uh, make sure that you comment if you are interested in my patreon for the type of videos that i'll be doing leave a comment in the section the comment section and i'll see y'all in the next video take care of your minds your hearts and your whole being and on that note